And he's like, oh, what the hell is this? What the hell is this? And she says, when you strike it, it absorbs kinetic energy. It has like all these, this purple energy inside of it. And she goes, okay, strike it again. He goes, all right. But then she takes out her phone. She's recording. She's like, are you recording this? And he, she goes, yeah, for scientific purposes. And he's like, all right. And he strikes it because he gets blasted back. <laughs> she starts laughing like, ah, ha, ha, ha. Delete that footage. Delete that footage. He's very upset by that chat. Hello, I just wanted to thank you for clicking on my video. And I wanted to let you know, not only do I create content on my YouTube channel here, Class in a Glass, but I'm also on Twitch where I play single player games, multiplayer games. I do movie reviews, cartoon reviews, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Also, it would be a big help if you can check out my Patreon, where you can gain access to uh, audio commentaries, reactions, and the ability to submit questions for my podcasts and videocasts. And all that content can be found in the links below. In the meantime, enjoy the video. Now, my friends, we got to go ahead and get to tonight's Review chat for Black Panther, one of the biggest films in the MCU. It's funny when I think about Black Panther chat. And I'll, you know, I'll, actually, I got, I, I got to start. I got to start by asking you a very important question, chat, because I'm gonna go on. This is gonna be a long review chat. So buckle up, Buttercup. We're gonna and fucking keep. I hope your ass is comfortable, chat. I hope your ass is comfortable because we're gonna be here for quite some time. But I gotta ask you this question, chat. I always do it for my reviews and especially for Black Panther, chat. I got to open with this one. How many of you have seen Black Panther chat? Well, the MCU film chat, the Marvel Cinematic Universe movie. Very curious, very curious. Oh, hell yeah, I saw it in theaters four times since Christmas Dark Souls just finished rewatching it during the stream. Who hasn't seen it uh, is a better question. That's true. It's all Goodman says, movie! <laughs> Mr. Robinator has seen Black Panther many times. You rascal, I have. Shrek Juice, I have. Uh, the Assign, yes, I have. You bum, bye! Our thief saw at home. Deadpool, Wakanda forever. Wakanda forever. Chat. Mm -hmm. So good, man. I sure did. Stranger Shoe. Yes. So I think a lot of you guys have seen this film. Ace Rock, welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing very well. Pleasure to see you, my friend. Hope your hump day has been treating you with much respect and goodwill. Alex Brunel says yes. So a lot of you have. Oh, that mentions I've been watching. I'm going to encourage you to watch this film. Uh, I mean, not only chat. I mean, obviously now when you you know watching this movie, it it it's. It's, it's a little sad now, I think. I think it's a little sad because of the passing. I mean, you have to address this, yeah. Because of the passing of uh, Chadwick uh, Boseman. You know, I think it, for a lot of people, it was, it was quite sudden. Um, you know, there were signs, but I never took it. I, I never took it seriously. I said, oh, he's just losing. Because when everyone saw him when he was very skinny, almost looked frail. And some publicity photos and things and interviews. And it's like, oh, he's just losing weight for the role. But actually, Chad, he, he had uh, uh, cancer. And uh, what was it? Was it, was it colon cancer, I believe? But yeah, I think he had a very serious cancer. Um, and, you know, when you, when you see this guy in these uh, incredible roles like T'Challa, Black Panther, you just think, oh, we're going to continue to see him in the Marvel Cinematic U Universe. Colon, it was colon cancer. He's got stage four colon cancer. Um, you think, oh, he's just gonna, we're, we're gonna see him again in the sequels and all these Marvel movies, and then it's just like, he was, his, his loss, it was just so sudden, it took everybody by surprise. I remember when I did, I, I remember distinctly when I was, uh, when it was announced that he died, I was just about to start my review, my spoiler review, for The Last Action Hero, and I actually just stopped doing it, because it, it, I was just like, I just couldn't do it. I was very sad, uh, as, as a lot of other people were, it was just, it was just such a shock. You know, I know he was, what, only 45 years old. He looks younger than that. But, you know, it mostly affected me and it mostly affected a lot of people. You know, watching this movie again, especially some particular scenes that I think take on a whole new uh, uh, context chat where, you know, I mean, the, the probably the most, which, I, which is why I include this image right here. It's probably one of the best scenes in the movie where, you know, he goes to confront uh, Eric Killmonger and he says, as you can see, I am not dead. And, uh... You know, it's like when that scene happens, I even got like a little teary eyed chat thinking, of course, now he's he's passed away. And like, I think a lot of this movie, because it's just his death is just so raw for a lot of people. It happened so soon in, 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 in 2020 that I think if you watch this movie, you'll I think I think you'll just have an emotional reaction like I did, chat. Not only for like just the, the incredible amount of work and everyone, all the amount of work that people put in this film, but just his role in particular and what his role, I think, meant for a lot of people. Obviously, I mean, we've, we have had black superheroes, uh, even uh, black lead superheroes, even like, uh, you know, with Blade and everything. But Black Panther was, I, I think, 
so much about African culture. I think it meant a lot for, for people. It had a predominantly uh, black cast. And also it was another, 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 you know, obvious proof to say, it's like, hey, you can have uh, a cast of, of, of minorities or, or colored leads and it's going to sell. It's fine. Like there's always been this misconception of Hollywood that if you have a black lead or if you have a black cast or, or any, or any, uh, you know, uh, culturally, uh, you know, or an ethnic cast or anything like that, then it's just not going to sell, which is obviously not true. I mean, Black Panther is one of those, like, excuse me, the film made $1.3 billion fucking dollars worldwide. It was the second highest grossing movie of 2018. Only behind, I believe, Avengers Infinity War. So that just goes to show you that, you know, Hollywood just doesn't know what they're talking about. And I think that this movie is just in, in, incredibly important for, for a lot of people. And I understand that. Uh, and, you know, its impact... It's cultural impact and not only pop culture zeitgeist, but for filmmaking, I think, for the many decades to come. People will point at this movie and say, whether you, whether you like it or not, whether you like it or not, it says this definitely had an impact on who we have directing movies, who we cast in films or write films or just the, the entire production process. Like, it's a very in, important movie. And, um, you know, I recognize that. You know, I have some problems with the film. I'll critique some of this stuff. Like, I think uh, Ryan Coogler has never been the best director when it comes to action. And I think that's probably one of the weak, weaker aspects of the film. There's a good action scene in the movie. There are several good action scenes. But uh, I, I will critique the CGI in this film. But still, it's, it's in terms of uh, it, 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 its story, its character development, uh, how it showcases Wakanda. Like, I never—it's funny, Chad, because, you know, I— it's like 10 years ago, I think just 10 years ago, Chad, when we got Avengers. Like, people back in the day didn't think Avengers was going to happen. Like, when fucking Samuel L. Jackson walked out, the end credit stinger of Iron Man, so I'm going to talk about the Avengers, and she's like, oh, bullshit, they'll never get there. And here we are, Chad, in, in 2021, we've gotten several Avengers films. We've gotten all sorts of superhero films and projects that have been greenlighted. It's like, it's incredible to see. And I was like, there was... I was like, I was I'm like, there's no way we're going to get a Black Panther movie. I would love the Black Panther movie, Chet, but it's like, there's no way they're going to do it. And now, lo and behold, we got it. And it's one of the most successful, commercially and critically successful films in the entire MCU franchise. And uh, just, to, just to think on that and the cultural and commercial impact it'll have for years to come. It's, just, it's truly amazing to behold. But, you know, I will, of course, have my own critiques of, uh, of, of this movie. And just to kind of give you like a brief background on the film, she obviously it's directed by Ryan Coogler. This is Ryan Coogler's third film, which is, um, which is amazing. He, of course, was known for directing Fruitvale Station, which is a great movie. Creed, Chet, which revitalized the Rocky franchise. You know, I love Creed. That's probably my second favorite in the Rocky. And Rocky's still my number one. I love Rocky, the original Rocky. Uh, and then after that, the, 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 the first Creed. And then his third movie being goddamn Black Panther, Chad, it's like, this This guy has a, had a hell of a career of only three films, and of course, right now, he's working on Black Panther 2, and he has a monumental uh, a task ahead of him, you know, with sadly dealing with the, the loss of, um, of uh, Chadwick Boseman, and how do you continue forward with that when your principal star, your, your lead character, uh, is like, he's gone. And so how they're going to address that is going to be very interesting. I mean, I have my own opinions on that, how I think would, would make more sense. Uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, so, yeah, I can't wait to see what he has to do. Has an all-star cast of people, everyone from Chadwick Boseman, Michael B. Jordan, which is so funny because before this, his other big, you know, claim the fame for superhero films, other than Chronicle, Chad, which Chronicle is great. Uh, I love Chronicle. Uh, but he did Fantastic Four, Fan Four Stick, which I've also reviewed. Want to check out their review? Go ahead and look at my YouTube channel, Class in the Glass, which is a, a bomb. So it was great to see him. Like, oh yes, he's perfect in Black Man, and he was so good. You know, before Thanos, Chad Killmonger was probably my favorite villain in the MCU. Uh, you know, I mean, and this, but I think this was around the time that we started to get like a lot of great MCU villains. Uh, you know, with with Vulture, we were, we always we always had Loki, and we had Ego, of course. And then you had Killmonger, and then you had Thanos. This was the start of, like, Marvel, like, okay, nailing it when it came to the villains. They did such a great job. Here, here's the thing with my biddies. And Jordan might be the only person from Chronicle who hasn't uh, tanked afterwards. I don't know what Dane DeHaan's doing. I know he's in some smaller projects, but no, he's, he's, he's doing incredible. Of course, he has Lupita Nyong'o chat. Uh, Danye, I'm going I'm to say some of these names wrong. Danye uh, Guerrera, who plays uh, probably her biggest claim to fame other than this, and she's obviously been doing a lot of other projects right now, but she was she plays Michonne in The Walking Dead. That's how a lot of people might recognize her. Martin Freeman, of course. Daniel Kaluuya chat. You, you know, it just came off of uh, um, Get Out, which is one of, my, one of my favorite films. It was my favorite film of 2017. 
uh, Latita Wright, Winston Duke, Angela Bassett, uh, Forrest Whitaker, Anderson. This was an all-star goddamn cast show, people. Um, uh, again, music by, I, I usually don't bring up the music chat because, you know, I'm very ignorant when it comes to music, but Ludwig uh, Goransson, who currently is doing the music for The Mandalorian, so he's very much in the Disney family right now, so good for him. Uh, and, of course, had a budget chat of $200 million and made $1.347 billion worldwide chat. So a huge success. So you know that, of course, they're going to do a sequel. And I'm very to see what form of that sequel is going to take. Um, yeah, ab- you know, absolutely love the movie chat. Few criticism, but overall, great experience. Highly recommend checking out. But chat, now we got to get into the scene by scene by scene by scene breakdown chat. And, and great, you know, it's funny. Anytime, you, this is interesting. Black Panther is one of those films that bucks the trend of we're going to throw a whole lot of exposition at you in, in the beginning. You know, I, it's, it's interesting. Uh, I'm always want to compare it to Green Lantern in a way because Green Lantern is like, okay. Fuck it, we got to explain Green Lantern Corps, the sectors, the guardians, the willpower, and it, and, and it sucked. But Black Panther circumvents all that, I think, with its introduction. And it's, a, it's a heavy exposition introduction. But what they do uh, visually and the fact that they make it a conversation is so smart. Because you remember, like, in, in the Green Lantern, you had uh, the, the, the alien guy just saying, this is the Green Lantern Corps, this is what happens, and this is the Guardians, and they made the Manhunters, and they made Parallax, and Parallax is a giant poo! He's a giant poo, and he absorbs everybody, and they poop. That's it. But this, they, they, they did the smart thing. Where uh, I didn't learn about this until after I'd seen the movie. I'd seen this. I saw this movie about three times in the theater, and uh, it's a conversation between a father and son. And you learn who those people are, Chat. It's it's uh, Prince Najobu, played to great effect by Sterling K. Brown. Chat. He was second in line to the throne uh, to uh, King T'Chaka, and his son. Eric Killmonger, that's the opening. It's like, oh my God, when you think about that. And it's him explaining to his son, because his son asked, tell me, tell, tell me a story, Dad. And he's like, well, what would you like me to tell you about? He's like, tell me that story of Wakanda. And he narrates the beginning and how this asteroid chat, this giant asteroid, crashed into the continent of Africa. And in this asteroid chat was uh, miles and miles of uh, and tons upon tons, hundreds of tons of vibranium chat, which powers the technology of Wakanda. It's in everything chat. It's even the goddamn plant life there. And it, you know, and you had these five warring tribes. You had these five tribes that coalesced around the vibranium and fought each other, uh, fought each other over the control of it for for years until one individual uh, who uh, be, uh, uh, witnessed had a vision. And he was guided by the Black Panther uh, Bast. I'm th- I believe him. That's how I say the name correctly, Bast. And I- imbued him with the uh, the knowledge to take uh, this this um, this orchid, this orchid chat, and to consume its essence. And its essence has vibranium, and it gave him uh, strength. Uh, cunning and and wisdom of the Black Panther uh, best, the Black Panther God. And he led four of the tribes, chat, to come together in harmony, while the fifth tribe, chat, the, I forget what they're called, but they're like the gorillas. They're, they're like the gorilla tribe. I forget what they're specifically called. It's Winston, du- Winston Duke's people. But they like they their their symbol is uh, of the of the gorilla. And they uh, live in Wakanda, chat, but they kind of live in isolation in the mountains. And, you know, they, 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 they've, uh, could, you know, you have the four tribes. They uh, protected Wakanda. You know, they used the vibranium to isolate themselves. That They observed all of the horrific things that have happened around the world, including the enslavement of, of, of Africans and to witness all this. And they've maintained an, isolation, an isolationist uh, a policy for hundreds, if not thousands of, uh, of years, Chad. And they have, because of this, uh, because of their secrecy, they have risen to actually be, even though they put on the front of being one of the uh, poorest nations in the world, they're actually the wealthiest and the most technologically uh, uh, powerful, Chad. You know, Wakanda is, 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 is Earth's greatest nation. So it's, it's, you know, it's very cool to see that. Uh, but because of this, you know, you, you have the, this very isolation society and, you know, they, they want to involve themselves in the threats of the outside world. And they've, but as you know, in the MCU, we've seen yet these threats grow in terms of superpower threats. They just kind of always uh, stayed out of the way unless, you know, involving themselves in various things yet. They do conduct espionage operations around the world and we see them begin this film. So we cut from this excellent exposition. So the, the Jabari tribe. Thank you, sir, baby. The Jabari. Thank you, chap. 
the Jabari tribe, the Gorilla tribe. Um, then we cut from that, and we're now in 1992 to, I believe, 1992 Oakland uh, or somewhere in California. And we, we, have, we focus on these uh, children playing basketball. He knows that the basketball hoop is just like a plank of wood and a shitty plastic uh, 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 basket chat that just has the hole cut out from the bottom, and all these kids are playing. Uh, but then we cut to the apartment chat of Sterling K. Brown, and he is with Young Forrest Whitaker chat. Zuri, Zuri, Young, young Forrest Whitaker chat. You can tell it's Young Forrest Whitaker because of the droopy eye. But they're planning some serious business chat. They are planning like, to, to rob a facility of some sort. They have assault weapons. And they're playing some kind of uh, what looks to appears to be some type of insurrectionist act. Uh, but all of a sudden, chat they the, the, the Sterling K. Brown he hears something outside. He hears a whoop, 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 whoop. You know, and they're like, you know, Zuri says, "What what what do you what do you, what, what do you think that is?" His name is actually James. We don't know he's Zuri yet, but his name is James Forrest Whitaker. And he's like, "What do you hear?" He's just like, uh, "Just like hide everything." So they put all the guns and everything inside these compartments, chat to hide them in these like fake walls and, and fake paintings and things. And then uh, they hear a knock on the door. James goes over. Chad Young Forrest Whitaker goes over. And he sees there's these th two Grace Jones-looking girls here. G Grace Jones-looking chicks. And, 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 you know, Sterling Carey Browns is like, let him in, let him in. And he's like, okay. Because, <laughs> you know, they're not going to knock a second time. So he lets them in, Chad. And, they, and then you have these ladies. You have these warrior women. And completely bald, Chad. Wearing these ceremonial armored garb. It's all red and gold. And they enter. And uh, they, they, they step in front of uh, uh, Sterling K. Brown, who, you know, they then start speaking uh, to him in Wakandian, Chad. Wakandian. He answers them in Wakandian. And they say, that, you know, to, you know, that we're going to come, we're going to turn the lights off. we got a surprise for you. And they go, boom, boom. And they turn the lights off. Thank you, Seth. But it's a funny side note. Looked up the actor playing Young Force Worker, and his name is Denzel Whitaker. Oh, but he's not. Yeah, the Forrest Whitaker. Why do you know? Wow, perfect casting, chat. Nye Brownie. Dummy, so, oh, hi, Christopher. Oh, hi, Juicy Gang. Nye Brownie, welcome to stream. I'm doing very well. Hi, Wayne. Nice seeing you. Always a pleasure to have you. Just in the middle of my review. Just started my review of Black Panther. My scene by scene by scene. By scene breakdown. The lights go off, and boom, T'Chaka's there. He goes, ah! He goes, oh! He was very scary, Chip. And then we got King T'Chaka, complete with ceremonial robe and the Black Panther outfit. And he says, you may leave us. And the guards leave, and uh, and uh, James is about to leave. But, you know, Prince Najobu, Chip. So, okay, Brown's like, no, no, I trust James. It's okay. He can stay with me. And uh, uh, Prince T'Chaka, he, he hugs his brother. He hugs his brother, uh, Prince Najobu, chat, asking him how, you know, uh, how he is. So like, Brown's like, I'm doing okay. How are you? How's things in Wakanda? And, uh, you know, uh, uh, King T'Chaka, chat, he's like, not so good, not so good. We, we just, we, we attempted to stop an operation by one Ulysses S. Claw, chat, Andy Circus, Schmeagle, Schmeagle himself, chat, little Gollum. He somehow got into Wakanda and stole like 10 tons of vibranium chat it's like holy shit that's a lot of vibranium and uh, he got out and uh, like a lot of Wakandians were killed a lot of Wakandians were killed and he, he, he came to confront Prince Najobu because you want me you, uh, now you're gonna actually make me ask you why this happened why this happened and you know Prince Najobu is like what do you want me to say He's because you helped Ulysses S. Claw get into Wakanda to steal this stuff why did you do it why did you do it and he's like oh, how do you know all this and it's revealed chat that that like young Forrest Whitaker, he was a spy. He was a spy for a spy chat. Because Sterling came around, he's supposed to spy. He's like a war. They call him war dogs chat. They call him war dogs, and he was spying on Prince Najobu. And fucking Sterling came around, it's like, what the fuck, man? He's just like, I'm Wakandian. I I had to do this, and he informed. King T'Chaka of old Prince N Najobu's evil deeds, and and Prince Najobu, he goes over it. He says, as I've lived here, as I've lived here, I've seen that the people, not only here, but all around the world, people who look like us, they're being abused, they're, 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 there's rampant violence and crime and, and drugs, and they're over-policed, and they need a way to fight back against their oppressors, okay? And it's like, we as Wakandians, we've abandoned all these people, and I want to give them the chance. And King is like, that is not our way, that is not our way, and Wakandians died because of what you did. And we're fucking taking you back with us. You're coming back with us. And Prince Najobu's like, oh, God, what am I going to do? And then, chat, we cut. We cut down to the basketball court. 
cut down the basketball court where we see uh, all these kids playing the basketball game. But one of them, Chad, one little kid, he observes the, 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 the Wakandian ship as it blasts off from the apartment complex, Chad. And all the kids look up and go, holy fucking shit, is that aliens, Chad? It's not aliens. It's Wakandians, Chad. It's Wakandians. And it blasts off. And then we cut again. And then we cut, Chad. We are in present day 2018, okay? And we see uh, uh, T'Challa, Chad, soon to be king, possibly soon to be king of Wakanda. And and he is on board one of those same uh, Wakandian ships, Shep, uh, watching news footage. Apparently, news footage. We learned that this takes place, I think, either a week or two weeks after the events of Civil War, which is really cool. I like that like, we have, like, a sense of time. So it's like, wow, right after this, all this crazy shit happened right after Captain America Civil War chat. It's pretty cool. And it talks about uh, the assassination of uh, King T'Chaka by one Zemo chap, soon to be Baron Zemo. Goddamn Daniel Brew, why are you doing that? And he's observing all this. And he's on a very important mission, Chad. He's hanging out with Ikoye. Ikoye, who's played by, uh, I always forget her name, Chad. Uh, uh, Danai Gurria. I'm sorry, I'm butchering her name. My apologies. I'm going to call her Ikoye for the rest of you for the sake of convenience. And she's piling this ship. She is the general, Chad. She is the main general of Wakanda's military forces. They're on a special mission because they are going after N Lupino Nwango chat. She is in Nigeria, and she is on an undercover mission trying to help these, these women and children and child soldiers who have been enslaved by this uh, Nigerian uh, rebel force. And they got to go down there and help them. And he's all suited up in his Black Panther suit, Chad. And the thing is, there's some history between uh, Lupita Nyong'o and, uh, uh, and T'Challa, Chad. They used to be boyfriend and girlfriend, but they're no more. They're no more girlfriend and boyfriend, Chad. They are, they are, uh, they are, they've broken up. And Okoye is just like, be sure not to freeze. And, uh, you know, and Charles like, I never please. And, right, and, right, and he, he hops out of the guy, puts his mask on, Chad. He hops out of the thing. It's so cool, CGI. He spins around, and he has these little, like, little discs. And when he spins, Chad, he throws them, and they all land on these cars. I look, uh, the holograms in Wakanda are really interesting to me. Like, all the technology, it has, like, uh, again, that African aesthetic, right? Like, that cultural African aesthetic. But it's, like, sand, which is pretty cool. It's, like, blue-gray sand. And so when they put up, like, they touch a button, a hologram, and it pops up, and it's, like, sand holograms, and the sand colorizes itself. It's really unique. A.A. Ron. <laughs> Aaron again, yes. <laughs> oh my god. And so we see the hologram. That's where they spot the convoy. And he throws all the little, um, like, the, disables the vehicles, Chad. Like, turns off the, the engines and things. And just electricity in general, which is very interesting. Lands on all of them, Chad. And they're all taken out. And this, this is one of my favorite actions in the movie. I really like this one. Because uh, the choreography and just how he moves. Very Batman. Very, very Batman here. And so they all get out of the cars, and they see the little, like, disc on. They can't get them out. They're, like, they're magnetized, and it's too much. And the guy is, like, you know, fucking, you know, defensive positions and shit. And they're all looking around and shit, and they hear, like, a branch creak. And they're like, what the fuck was that? And they look up. It's Black Panther! And he starts killing everybody, Chad. Like, unlike Batman, Black Panther, he kills a lot of motherfuckers, Chad. And he just starts going around, punching, clawing, and just <laughs> snapping necks. She's like, holy shit! We then cut to Lupia Nyong'o, Chad, who's in the back of one of these trucks. And she says, all right, ladies, I'm going to go outside. I'm going to see what the ruckus is all about she goes out there and she starts doing her kung fu chat she is also i guess technically also a war dog i don't know what her specific um they never really call her a war dog they only call her a spy but i guess she is a war dog chat and she does these uh, missions, I guess, all around the world, helping a people, uh, helping people who have been, you know, caught caught in these these wars or being abused and things like that. Uh, and in this case, it's in Nigeria, very close to home. And so she starts doing all her kung fu fighting. But then Chadwick Boseman sees and he freezes. He's like, uh, "Oh, little Peter!" And he freezes Chad. And then he's almost he's almost uh, murdered. He's almost murdered um, by um, this one guy. This one guy. And Okoye comes down, and she stabs it. She stabs the, the guy, Chad. But the one person they don't kill is a little child soldier. And, and Plea Nong is like, don't hurt him. He's like 16. And he's like, all right, I won't stab him. I won't stab him. My like, nah, my kitty cat claws. Kitty cat claw attack. And, uh, and Koye asks uh, Plea Nong, did he freeze? He's like, yes. He's like, you always freeze. And he's like, I, shut up. Stop making fun of me. And... Olivia Noango's very upset because she's like, why did you interrupt my mission? I was going to get these women out of here. And he says, something serious has happened, Lupita Noango. My, uh, my dad, he's dead. And she says, oh, no, your dad's dead. He's like, yeah. And it's like, I, I'm going to be soon crowned king, and I'd like you to be there. And she's like, okay, I guess I'll come with you. Uh, and, you know, uh, Koye, she goes and talks to the women along with Lupita Nyong'o, and he says, speak not of what you have seen here, okay? Keep this a secret between us ladies and also this kid. And they, and they go back in the spaceship chat, and they head to Wakanda. 
It's very good. And we see, like, because uh, Wakanda, uh, it's, it's interesting because we see, like, the news report footage of, like, oh, it's a third world country and they're the, one of the poorest in African things. It's all fucking ruse chat. And they have, like, they're just, you know, typically known for their sheep herding. You know, they don't trade with anyone because they don't need to, chat. All their resources are available to them. They're, they're the, what, they're the, they are the self-efficient country, chat. And the only one on the entire goddamn planet that don't rely on trade. And so we see, like, oh, it's like borders are surrounded by all these mountains ranges. And we see these people on horseback riding. They're cheering as they see the, the, the ship. It decloaks. And they're going what looks like into this giant jungle, Chad. They're going to go right into this, the side of this mountain jungle. And, you know, and the child is like, I can never get tired of this. And they go through it, Chad. And ba-boom! And you get the, bum, 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 the, the, the dramatic music. Great music again. And we see the city of, or at least one of this main city. I think this is the, the capital of Wakanda, Chad. Clearly, there are, like, multiple cities in this country. I guess, for whatever reason, people just think Wakanda is the city. It's not. Like, it's a, it's a country in itself. This is just one of those protected cities, Chad, the capital. I guess it was the main tribe, T'Challa's tribe, who founded the city. And you have the other uh, four tribes who founded their own individual cities. All around Wakanda. I guess they have similar protections. That would be cool in the sequel if they, sh if we see other cities in Wakanda. Because we only see two. We see this, the main capital, I guess, uh, Wakanda. If someone, if someone knows what the capital of Wakanda is, I would really appreciate that. Also, we see the the uh, uh, Winston Duke's uh, city right there, too, which is in the mountains. And something else, which is really neat. So he goes in there, chat, and it's like, whoa, we see all the history. We see these giant skyscrapers, but they have that, again, that African aesthetic which is really cool. And they land on this huge landing pad, Chad. Yeah, we see Angela Bassett, who's Black Panther's mama. His mama's there, and his sister. His sister's dad played by uh, uh, Latita Wright. Latita Wright, uh, uh, Shuri, Shuri. And they're waiting for him. He walks out and goes, Wakanda forever. He goes, yeah, Wakanda forever. I love it because <laughs> every time we see that, it's like, yeah, Wakanda forever. If you ever look at pictures of Chadwick Boseman from like when he first started promoting the film to like when it was like Avengers Endgame or Infinity War, he was like, Ugh. I'm tired of doing this. I'm tired of doing Wakanda forever. <laughs> Shelly Finn, welcome to stream. Thank you for the 100 biddies. Hope you're doing very well. Good to see you. Mm. Oh, the costume design. No, it, it's apps. This one, didn't this win like best costume design? The Oscars the year it came out. Uh, no, the costume design, the, the 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 sets, the production, really incredible. They really did a great job of defining the culture and aesthetic of Wakanda. That's why it's one of those films that. You know, it's kind of up there with Guardians to me in terms of like its aesthetic because it's so starkly different than other MCU movies. And so I really like that, how it just stands out, like just the way it looks. Uh, like this and Guardians to me always, always really, really did a good job with that. And just like the set design, the costumes and the makeup and everything. Uh, and he goes up on this platform, you know, whatever, going out and he sees his mom and he's like, how you doing, mom? He's still sad about dad. And he's just like, I'm proud of you because you are soon to be king. And his little sister's always making fun, always fucking with him. <laughs> sister's always fucking with him, which I love. And... Yeah, he's like, you're not messing with my junk, are you? Because she's like, she's the most intelligent character in the MCU, Chad Shuri. She's smarter than Bruce Banner. She's smarter than uh, Tony Stark, Chad Shuri. He's great. It's all the big technology in Wakanda. And, you know, he's messing with her, and she's messing with him, and she's walking away. And he's like, I kind of want to see your ceremonial outfit for the inauguration. And she goes, and she flips him off. And Angel Bassett goes, sure, he says, sorry, mama. It's like, I love that they have the bickering, but it's like a bickering relationship. They still clearly love each other. Uh, Koya goes off, and Black Panther's staring at that ass. She's like, that's a good-looking ass. And even sure, he's making calling out, stop staring at her ass to Charlie. He's like, I can't help it. It's just, ba-boom, I can't help myself. Thank you, Austin, for the host. Welcome to stream. As we say, guys, the host means a lot to me. Helps spread the word of the Revenites. There's the words going out there right now. Chad, hopefully, now I get some more Revenites, but also Huckleberries. Preach those Huckleberries, too. And Shelly Finn, thank you for the host. Welcome to stream. And uh, Angela Bassett, she's just so proud. She's just so proud uh, uh, of her uh, of her son. But the thing is, Chad, there's a whole goddamn process to becoming a king. It's not just you just go from, you know, uh, the father to the son. No, you got to do There's a specific ceremony you have to participate in, Chad. And if you are of royal blood, you can also claim the, uh, the throne. But you have to participate in gladiatorial combat, Chad. That's what you must do. And so then everyone uh, gets all pretty for the ceremony chat. T'Challa's got, he's all dressed up. And they go to the, uh, the this, this, this uh, I guess, sacred place chat. We get like a parade procession. Everyone's dancing around. It's good times. And it's just this, this waterfall. This is where they come to CGI. It looks a little bad. Uh, right here, you have to see these people on these precipices. It's like, that doesn't really, that just looks a little, uh, little that needed some additional renderings. Like, how do they even get up there? How'd they get up there? I guess the, 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 the ships dropped them off. 
Everyone's dancing, having a good time. But he, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's come off this ship. He's come off this ship. And you have Zuri. You have old for this worker, Chad. Zuri, he's there. And he's like the main priest. He takes care of the, uh, of the purple orchids that give Black Panther his, his powers, Chad. And Chisala comes out. He's got like this, uh, the, the, these, um, uh, this painting on his body, Chad, kind of symbolizing uh, his uh, his people, Chad, the Black Panther himself. And Zuri is like, is that anyone who would challenge uh, the right of T'Challa for king of Wakanda? And then we hear the who. Who, who? And we hear the who? And we hear like, oh, oh no, Chad, it's the Jabori tribe. It's the Jabori tribe. And you have Winston Duke. He's like, I will not have it. I will not have it. He will not have it, Chad. Winston Duke or the Jabori tribe, who is that fifth tribe, is the fifth tribe, Chad. And they're not joining the other ones. They, they, they live in isolation. They're even more isolationist than the Wakandians, Chad. They live in the mountain region. And Winston Duke goes, I will not have it. You, I will not bow to you. You are not my king. They gave it the 10 bits. 10 bits for our track. And Mabaku is, though. Am I right? Oh, no, he's hot. No, a lot, a lot of hot, lot hot ladies, hot guys, Chad. There's a lot of good tukuses in this movie. Many, many tight and round tukuses. What is not to love, Chad? There's a lot of handsome and pretty people in this movie. And Mabaku comes out. He's like, I ain't bound to you. And it's like fucking gladiatorial combat, Chad. And everyone starts, and it's like, okay, here's what you got to do. Because he has a claim to a chain. He has the claim to the throne. He is also of royal lineage, royal blood. And he is just as, uh, um, uh, it's just as, as much of a possibility to him to become king of Wakanda, Chad. And so we get a goddamn throwdown between uh, uh, Chadwick Boseman and Winston Duke, Chad. And it seems like Winston Duke has the advantage, Chad. He's got, looks like, at least 100 pounds over Chadwick Boseman. He's throwing him around everything, Chad. They use weapons and shit. And he stabs Chadwick Boseman in the tummy. He's like, ah, tummy. Right in the tum tum, Chad. But Chadwick Boseman, he's like, I gotta take this guy down. I gotta cut off his, uh, his oxygen. I gotta, I, I gotta to asphyxiate him. And so he wraps his thick Chadwick Boseman thighs around Mumbaku's neck. And he goes, ah! and he's like, yield, you must yield. He's like, I will never yield. He's like, you got to yield, man. He, tap, he taps out. He taps out. He doesn't kill him, though, because he doesn't want to kill him, Chad. And Mubaku is taken uh, from his, uh, back to his, uh, by his fellow Jabori, Chad. And Chadwick Boseman is like, I don't want to kill anybody, okay? That's the last thing I want to do. I want to be king of all of Wakanda. And that includes Jabori. And Mubaku go like, mm. They got like a little, little subtle, like, nod. All right, cool, man. Cool. Thank you for letting me live. I remember that near, near the, the, the third act. And he's uh, out of the for uh, most of the movie, right, Chad? Uh, Mubaku, he leaves. Everything's going really great. It's like, oh, they do one thing too. So in order to participate in this combat, uh, uh, you have to take the powers of the Black Panther away. I will now strip the powers of the Black Panther away. And so he drinks like this other herb that strips all the powers of Black Panther from the Chichala. So he's just fighting with his normal ability, Chad, against Winston Duke. Because it wouldn't be fair. It would not be fair if he had the Black Panther powers fighting Winston Duke because he's already much stronger than Winston Duke. Because uh, I think the, the, the blue or the, the purple orchid it gives you increased strength, uh, durability, um, um, and uh, cunning. Cunning. They say they they say cunning in particular, and speed, and speed. You can run really fast as a kitty cat. And so, but then he get you get oh, oh, and after that, everything's going great. But the ceremony is not yet over. Chad's not yet over. He defeat his his challenger, but now he must go to the spirit realm. He's got to go with the, the spirit realm. Uh, Chris, internet never freeze. What is my internet frozen? Is my internet okay? Is everything all right? Just want to make sure. Oh, okay. All right. So you said my internet froze. All right. Um, okay. Uh, where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Uh, oh yeah. Okay. So, uh, so it's great. He de he defeated he, he defeated his uh, his challenger chat, and now he has to go see his dad in the spirit realm. And so they bury him in a pit. They make him drink some stuff. They make him drink some purple stuff, and he uh, he go he goes to sleep chat. And then he is in like a purple spirit realm, kind of like when Simba talked to his dad Mufasa. And we see these black panthers shit. We see these black panthers in this tree, and then T'Chaka T'Chaka appears uh, uh, before his son. And he's like, Dad, and T'Chaka's like son, and they hug, and T'Challa falls upon his knees, and he says, I miss you, I miss you so much, I'm not ready to be king, he's like, stand up, you are king, and he, you know, he says, you have prepared for this day your entire life, you've stood by me, you will make a fantastic king, I am proud of you, T'Challa, you will lead the Wakandian people against any threat, and he's like, I'll do my best, Dad, and he, ah, he comes out of the dream chat, and they bury him alive, he's like, ah! and he's like, and he's like, Zuri, I saw him, I saw him, and Zuri's like, yes, yes, you, you, you have done well. You have done, you have done very well. And so, yes, he's, he's finally crowned king. Everybody's happy. Everybody's having a great time, chat. Ah, but there's a threat out there, chat. There's a threat out there. And we cut to the United Kingdom, chat. We cut to the United Kingdom. 
where we uh, see uh, 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 Michael B. Jordan chat as Eric Killmonger. We don't know who he is yet. We see Michael B. Jordan, Eric Killmonger chat, and he is in a museum, and he is he is dressed. They don't like the way he's dressed, chat. We got some racism on full display, and we have these security guards who are watching him, and I guess the main exhibitor of the museum chat. You know, this white British lady, chat, the colonizers, if you will, the OG colonizers, chat, the OG colonizers. She's coming over there to talk to uh, uh, Killmonger to see why he's so interested in all these African artifacts, you know. And she comes on over. And she's like, uh, can I help you, sir? Oh, he's like, yeah, I just want to know about some of these things. And she's like, well, this is from this tribe. This is from this century. This is from this tribe, from this century. He goes, oh, that's really cool. That's really cool. Hey, what's what's this thing, this this pickaxe, this weapon? Uh, and she goes, that is from this tribe from Africa. And he goes, eh, wrong answer. That's not from that's not from uh, that tribe. That's Wakandian right there. That's vibranium. And she goes, um, well, I don't believe that uh, is, is correct. She, and he goes, oh, don't worry. I'm going to take it off your hands anyway. She's like, excuse me, sir, none of this is for sale. And he fucking, he bamboozles her channel. It's like, oh, yeah, it wasn't for sale. But didn't your ancestors take these from mine? And they weren't for sale at the time. And now it's here in your goddamn white museum. And she's like, security, there's a black man. And he's like, but he's like, oh, your security, you're going to call your security on me. It's like, oh, you have all this security. And you, all while she's doing this shit. She's drinking this coffee, and she's got the bubbly gut. She's like, oh, brr, just farting the whole time. She just can't help but fart as the coffee, and, the, and but there's something else in the coffee. It's poisoning her inside, Chad. She's like, oh. He's like, all oh, this goddamn security, and you didn't check the coffee. Something's hurting you from the inside in your tummy. And she's like, no. And she starts shitting and pissing. It's all oh, it's horrible. And she falls down, and he's like, ah, oh, someone's got to help this. Someone's got to help this girl. And... And then, chat, we cut, we cut. And he's like, someone's asked to call the paramedics. And they call the paramedics. Chat, paramedics start coming in. And they're going in. And we see this one girl, this, uh, this, uh, who's really Killmonger's girlfriend. Chat, it's Killmonger's girlfriend. And she's, she let the, the, the paramedics in. She's like, I got to go on break. I got to help my boyfriend, uh, overthrow the colonizers. And she does her thing. And the whole, uh, the paramedics come in there, chat, and they're, you know, like, oh, don't worry, what happened? And they're like, ah, she had bubbly guts. They're like, oh, it's just serious. Now you're dead! And it's Andy Circus, chat. One of the paramedics is Andy Circus, and he starts popping all these guys, chat. Ulysses S. Claw. He pops, and I love it. By the way, Claw, I wish he was in the movie more and in future Black Panther films. That's another crit criticism. I wish they didn't kill him. I wish they didn't kill him here because he's he's so much fun. He like he didn't get he didn't get nearly enough time in Ultron chat. No one did. But I would have liked he was so good in this. I would like to see him more. I, mean, I guess he kind of served his purpose, but he's just a fun character to have. And he kills like uh, three of the security guards, but like one guy's like, oh, he's like, oh, come here, come here, man, come here, come here, come here. He's like, yeah, he's like, listen, don't worry about it. I'm, I'm gonna let you live. I'm gonna let you go. Okay, go, go, go ahead and start running. And the guy goes, okay, he starts running, and then boom, right in the back of the head. <laughs> Even Killmonger's like, why did you shoot him, man? He's like, I want him. Oh, yeah, I want, you gotta spread out the crime scene. Looks like it was made, uh, done by amateurs. And he goes, ah, I see. And then we see, Kill and then we see Killmonger like, oh, there's the, there's the, the Wakandian artifact. There's the vibranium, and they, they need the vibranium, chat. And Ulysses has claw. He has a, he's, he has a robot hand now because we learned, chat, in, in Edge Ultron, Ultron cut off. Claw's hand for some reason because he got mad when he compared him to Stark. He's like, don't compare me to Tony Stark. And he was very upset by that. Ultron did not like that. He did not like that, Chad. And he cut off his arm, but now he's got a cool Wakandian uh, like uh, sonic blaster gun for an arm. Chad also does all sorts of other things. And he puts it in the glass, goes boom, and it, all the glass shatters. Chad doesn't affect the things inside. And he then puts his hand uh, next to it and gets all the rust off. Chad, and it is indeed vibrating. He snaps it, and he goes, oh, this is going to get us a big fucking payday, uh, uh, Killmonger. And they put Killmonger on the stretcher, and they take him out of there, chat. And then uh, uh, Killmonger's girlfriend's in the, in the back of the ambulance, and they start having hot, sweaty smooches, chat. Hot, sweaty sex. And fucking use those claws. It's like, hell yeah, now it's a party. And they've bamboozled the colonizer, chat, the OG British colonizers. Now, yeah, well, while this is going on, uh, you know, uh, fucking Chadwick Boseman, chat. Uh, good old T'Challa, he's just happy being king. He's enjoying himself. He's hanging out with his, uh, his little sister, Shuri. Hanging out with his little sister Shuri, she's got some uh, new stuff to show him, right? Uh, and is I love this scene because it really just shows you the relationship that they have. Where you know he walks in there and you know she bows. She's like, "My king." He's like, "Stop it, stop it." And they do this like they do this like you know total like sibling uh, greeting. It was it was so much fun. 
so much fun. She's like, I got some new stuff to show you. Hope it didn't fuck up my equipment when you use it in the field. And she shows him, uh, she's, oh, you know, she shows him like these, uh, uh, these new, uh, like, you know, holographic beads or these little like hollow beads that they can do anything. They can disable a truck. They can even heal you, chat. And she's like, I got some, I got some new shoes I want to show you. But before she shows, like, but first of all, you got to tell me why. What are those? And he's, which is a meme, a gift chat. We've seen it all before in 2018. And he's wearing these uh, black sandals. He's like, I wanted to go old school on my first day as king. She's like, they're nice. They're nice. But I want to show you something else. He's like, here, look at these. I'm working on my own types of shoes. She puts them on the ground. And he, he puts his feet on them, Chad. Puts his tootsies on them. And they wrap around all the way up to his ankles. And she's like, it's really cool technology. And if you even slam on the ground, they don't make a single sound. And he goes, well, they're, they're, they're perfect for stealth operations. She goes, yeah. Guess what I named them? He's like, what? I call them sneakers, <laughs> which is so funny. It's a lot of puns. Oh, uh, it was great. And he goes, and she's like, never mind, never mind. He, just, he didn't get it. He didn't get it. He's a little slow in the uptake chat. But she wants to so show him something else. New Black Panther suits. And it's like, I always like to see like new costumes in each movie, like little uh, advanced versions. She's like, yeah, yours is too utilitarian. Makes fun of him all the time. You know, it's like, he's like, well, my design is great. She goes, yeah, let me go, go ahead and put my mask on once people are shooting bullets at me. He goes, all right, fine, okay. I mean, I got to get the mask on pretty quick when people start shooting at me. Because the vibranium chat bullets just bounce off him like fucking Superman. And she's like, I got two suits for you. And she sews two of the suits. One's the Golden Jaguar suit, chat, which will later be adopted by Eric Killmonger himself. And he goes, this one's a little ostentatious, the goal. I want the, the point is not to be known. She goes, fair enough. And here's the more, uh, more uh, subdued version with a little silver claw. She's like, I like this one a lot better, the silver kind of like claw necklace. And she goes, I want to show you some cool stuff with it. And he goes, all right. Uh, it's like, go ahead and strike it. Go ahead and strike it. And he goes, okay. He fucking strikes it and flings across the room. She goes, I, not that hard. Jesus, you're coming to my lab and you're fucking with everything. You said strike it. She says, not that hard, goddamn. She puts it right there. And he's like, oh, what the hell is this? What the hell is this? And she says, when you strike it, it absorbs kinetic energy. It has like all these, this purple energy inside of it. And she goes, okay, strike it again. He goes, all right. But then she takes out her phone. She's recording. She's like, are you recording this? And he, she goes, yeah, for scientific purposes. And he's like, all right. And he strikes it because he gets blasted back. <laughs> she starts laughing like, ah, ha, ha, ha. Delete that footage. Delete that footage. He's very upset by that chap. <laughs> but then after that little experience, after that little lovely little time, he goes and hangs out with his best buddy, Daniel uh, uh, Kalua, chat. Daniel Kalua, who played Christopher Washington, Get Out. He's also in the movie, chat. And he's part of the Border Tribe. These, these, these guys are kind of like, they, uh, they give the appearance that Wakanda is like, oh, it's just a bunch of you know, sheep herders and stuff. It's like, whatever. But ah, no, they're one of the security forces of Wakanda, chat. They make sure that no one gets in, no one gets out. No way in, no way out, chat. Them's the rules. Them's the rules, chat. And we see these giant CGI rhinos. He makes these feeding CGI rhinos like peaches and stuff. They're having a good time. And Christopher Clue is like, oh, man, you know, it's uh, it's been rough. But I'm, I'm happy to see you as king. I'm hoping there'll be a lot more. I love your dad. Your dad was great. But I hope there'll be a lot more changes, you know, in the future, you know. Wakanda needs to be strengthened from within. He's like, I agree with you, Daniel Kalua. But, oh, no, they get like an they get like an um, uh, emergency call. And it's from uh, Okoye. Chino. Okoye is calling. And they call them both of them, and they both they turn it on. They're looking, and she goes, "My king, my love," because she loves Okoye. Now, is Okoye her husband or her boyfriend? I heard that it was it was Paul Giamatti, the rhino. <laughs> it was Paul, they grow Paul Giamatti's in Africa. <laughs> this is perfect. They're married. Okay, wow. Ooh. That's gonna be a that's gonna be a rough time. I'm here to see what happened that relationship at the end of this film. A lot of bad stuff, Jay. A lot of bad stuff happened between the two of them. I think it's going to end in divorce. Um, but they get a call. And apparently they learned that Ulysses S. Claw, Chad, has staged a robbery at the Museum of Colonizers. They're like, oh, my God. And they have this big old meeting, Chad. And you see the other members, the heads of the tribes, at least the, uh, the other three that are there, Chad. Uh, uh, you also have Lupita Nyong'o. She's there. Everyone's everyone that who needs to be there is there, chat. And they're like, uh, yeah, Lucius Claw. He stole this vibranium, right? And apparently, he's gonna sell it uh, to the highest bidder. And he apparently has a bidder in South. He has a bidder in South Korea right now. He's gonna give it to him. And they cannot let this vibranium uh, get out in the open world. Chad's too dangerous in the hands of the whites. And they gotta stop it. They gotta stop it. 
And, you know, and the thing we learned is that, that uh, Daniel Kaluuya, yeah, his mom and dad were killed in the attack 30 years ago uh, by Ulysses S. Claw when he first robbed it in 1992. So he has a personal stake. So he wants to be involved in the operation, but he's like, no, you got to stay here. And, and T'Challa is like, even though I'm the king of Wakanda, I have to involve myself in these operations. He's like, no, you're a king. You should remain here. He's like, no, no, no. Ulysses S. Claw is personal. I will bring him the justice for you. You know, Daniel Kaluuya is like, yeah, hell yeah, man. And so he forms this team of Okoye, Lupia Nwango, and Shuri, you will ha help operations here unless I need you for specific things. He's like, okay, let's take a trip to South Korea, chat. Take a trip to South Korea. And so we go to South Korea, and, you know, they're, they gotta, they're at this meeting. They, thankfully, they have contacts. Lupia Nwango, she is a spy. She has been to South Korea many times, and she knows the person who's the head of this. She's like, controls this club chat where all sorts of illicit things are sold and dealt to people. They show up in South Korea. We get a very uh, little funny gag chat because, um, you know, there, there's, a, like, there's subtle references to uh, like real cultural things uh, for uh, black people, like the one with um, that, that, that got a lot of big laughs from the audience, is where you have Okoye who is forced to to wear this wig, and she said, "This is fucking ridiculous," you know, because she likes her, 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 her the way her her head is naturally chat, her natural hair or lack thereof, like this is how it is, and she doesn't feel like she should you know have to wear something like this, you know. It's like, no, I want to embrace who I am and my culture, and so they they constantly make fun of that fact. Like, oh, it's a little subtle, little subtle uh, socio political critique right there. Very cool, very good. Very good, Ryan Coogler. And so they step out, and they all look fucking hot. You know, Bozeman looks hot. Pianoaga looks hot. You know, Koya looks hot. They're walking uh, they're walking down to this. It looks like uh, like a fish market in, in South Korea, Chad, which is cool that they actually filmed this in South Korea. Um, it's like reverse racism. <laughs> Gorn was like, Thanos, except he only wanted to get rid of He wanted to get rid of the whites. It's like, I want to, I don't, only one I want to get rid of is the whites, which he was going to kill. That was his plan, chat. I want to kill all white people. <laughs> it's like, wow. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And so um, they're at the, the uh, South Korean fish market, and we see a, um, a Lupia Nwango's uh, uh, contact chat, and she's sitting there, and she's like, all right, Lupia Nwango, now you promise not to, you know, bamboozle anybody. You promise to be good. She's like, I'll be good. And they get a little, a little kiss. So it's like, all right, go, go ahead, get inside, get inside. And they go inside, chat, and it's just opulent. It's like, outside looks like there's just a fucking fish mark, but inside, chat, goddamn, like, you know, ostentatious-looking uh, club, gambling den. They got everything down there. And they're like, okay, we got to go ahead and try to find the buyers. They know that the buyers from the UCS Claw are the whites, are the, are the Americans. They know they're Americans, chat, white America. And so, like, we got to find these guys. And they're like, they split up and everything. And uh, Lupita Nyong'o and Chadwick Boseman, they're kind of flirting back and forth. They also had an earlier scene where, you know, Chadwick Boseman says, listen, hey, I, I bought... I you know, I brought you back not only for my coronation because I, I do care about you. And she's like, listen, uh, uh, I, I don't know. It's complicated. And he's like, ah, you, you'd you be, um, you know, you're, you're too stubborn. She's like, I'd be a, vi no, I should be stubborn as queen. She says, as queen. She's like, if I wanted to be queen. And so you could tell that they still have that, that, you know, they have feelings for each other, chat. And it's on full display here during uh, this mission. But then Okoye is just like, could you two stop ogling each other's asses, all right? I know they're both big and tight and round, but could you just please, like, you know, let's get the goddamn job done here. And they're like, okay. And, you know, Chow, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, Lupita Nwango, she gets herself a whiskey, which, by the way, I noticed she's drinking fucking Jack Daniels, chat. It's like, no one should drink Jack Daniels. Oh, my God. Like, give her some high-quality stuff, chat. High-quality goddamn liqueur. Dig fucking pouring Jack Daniels in this fucking club. Ridiculous, chat. Ridiculous. And so, I, I, she, she deserved better. But she's observing all this. Thing. She's spawning all these Americans and things. Uh, multiple Americans, chat. Multiple whites. And so... Uh, uh, make it uh, Suntory Town. Make it some. Make it something good. Make it something good, yeah. Go for roses. Go with any high, uh, high quality looker. Fucking Marvel. Pay the goddamn money. Let's go eat fucking Jack. Jack makes a fucking mint in these movies, yeah. Because anytime you see whiskey in a, in like a lot of modern films, it's always Jack Daniels. That stuff sucks. You should only use it. Only use Jack Daniels for mixing beverages. Don't you? Don't drink it straight. Ugh. No. No fucking way. Trash, chat. Trash. She deserved better. Anyway. And they're walking around, and T'Challa, he notices who, Chad? Bilbo Baggins, Chad. Bilbo Baggins, who, uh, of course, as we all know, works for the CIA. He was established in, in Captain America Civil War, and he spots T'Challa. He's like, ah, shit, here we go. And Chris Herman is booze. I am booze pants, I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about, Chad. 
And he goes there and he's like, T'Challa, what are you doing here? What are you doing here, Bilbo? You're here to buy some from some vibranium? And he's like, uh, yes, this is a CI operation, okay? Listen, we had a deal last time. I, I, you, you let, let me, you know, because Charles Bosley's like, hey, man, we gave you Zemo. He's like, yes, you gave us Zemo. But I also didn't reveal to, to Central Intelligence that you're running around in a, in a black kitty cat costume, okay? So let us do our job. We're right here to meet Ulysses S. Claw. We're going to get him, so don't involve yourself. And Chadwick Boseman's like, I'm going to do whatever the hell I want. And he places this, like, this big bet, and he wins. I'm, great cameo, by the way. Great cameo here. Chris is a certified alcoholic. He knows what's good and bad. I do. I do know what's good and bad. But I love this scene. Because even though T'Challa is, is incredibly wealthy, I think he's a trillionaire. So it's like he makes a big bet. He wins like millions of dollars. And, you know, even if he wins, he just walks away. And uh, Bilbo's like, hey, man, you, you won. You won. And he's like, all right. And the person who comes over and just says, don't worry. I'll, 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 I'll make sure these are safe for him later on. I'm just going to move in my way. Stan Lee, chat. Fantastic cameo by Stan Lee. I'll keep him safe. Excelsior. And he runs off with a whole lot of money at the end of this movie, Jack, clearly. Uh, but, you know, he's walking around. And then, shall we see uh, 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 Ulysses S. Claw's entourage, and they're playing a whole bunch of loud music, Chad, and they pop up a lot of the hippity hops, a lot of the R&B. Ulysses S. Claw, he has, a, he has a wide variety of tastes in music. And I just love just the energy that, that Andy Circus brings to the role, because he's like, he's always, like, excited just to be there. He's like, yeah! <laughs> he's just moving like this the whole time. And he sees... um. Uh, the South Korean uh, fishmonger lady who's actually the owner of the club. And she goes, mm, he goes up there and goes, Mwah! just kisses her chest. <laughs> and he goes inside. They know each other. They know each other. And all of his security passed by the mail detector. And they're all fucking armed, chat. They're all armed with weapons. So a lot of crazy shit's about to go down. And so they're all watching this. They're all watching this. He listens to Claw. He goes up to Bilbo. And he listens to Claw. He's like, you got the diamonds, Bilbo? He's like, you got the vibranium? And, uh, you know, he's like, you show me the diamonds first. And, you know, fucking Bilbo chosen the diamonds. He's like, ah, ha, 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 ha. He's so happy about it. Also, he's like, do you, <laughs> it's funny because Bilbo, uh, like, comments on, like, the size of his, uh, uh, his posse. And the music that he hears, like, blaring outside. And he's like, what, you're going to do your own mixtape? He's actually, I got my own mixtape, man. I'll give you the SoundCloud link. Hey, man, you got the SoundCloud link? I love that Ulysses S. Claude does his own goddamn music <laughs> and wants to share it on SoundCloud. He's like, I don't want your music. <laughs> I don't want your music. No, thank you. Oh, my God. Uh, all right, did he real? It's so funny that we now have the uh, the sequel chat to the Bilbo and Schmeagle relationship. Here they are again, <laughs> asking each other riddles and things. But you know, Bilbo's like, "Where's the vibranium?" And fuck, this is hilarious. I don't know if Andy Circus thought of this or Ryan Coogler thought of this, but it's brilliant because what fucking <laughs> he listens as Claude does, he puts his he unzips his 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 uh, his pants chat right near his crotch and goes right for the deech and just ah, and he pulls out the vibranium. <laughs> which is in like a, a, a brown paper bag that says fragile. And Martin Freeman's like, really, dude, really? I have to keep it safe. I, I mean, I didn't want to buy an expensive briefcase. I wanted to save some money. But he was keeping it right where his dick is. <laughs> it's like, wow. And he goes, great. The thing is, though, Chad, Okoye, she's been spotted because the some of uh, uh, Ulysses S. Grant's, uh, uh, or not Grant, Ulysses S. Claw, not, not the fucking Civil War general and, and president, no, not him, not the 18th president of the United States of America, uh, but one of some of Claw's boys spot her, and she's been made, Chad, and she gets, to, oh, she starts beating everybody up, and she takes her hair off and goes, gah, hair attack, and the hair eats the guy's face, Chad, he's dead, the hair consumes his body, Chad, okay? And so everyone gets, starts fighting, and then fucking Ulysses Claw's like, we've been bamboozled, boys. And he starts shooting at Bilbo Baggins, but Bilbo has his, uh, his uh, you know, briefcase, and he blocks all the goddamn bullets. This is the best action scene in the movie to me. And I mean, yes, it's, it's filled with CGI, but it also looks practical, too. I just love the set design. It's just really cool how they're all moving around. We see some actual choreography here. It's handled very well. And, all, of course, eventually, chat, we see... Um, T'Challa confront uh, Ulysses' claw who recognizes him. He's like, oh my God, you look just like your dad. And we see his arm cannon finally reveal itself where he's, he's, it's cool. Like it splits between his hand right here. It goes poop and it goes all the way up his arm. And it's like a giant sonic cannon. It goes boom, which is what uh, Ulysses' claw's main weapon was in the comics. He, he, he has like a sonic cannon, which is really cool, based on Wakanda technology. And he blasts T'Challa. T'Challa like grabs this um, uh, this drink station thing and he's shot uh, back. Well, actually, it was filled with all the chips and money. 
funny. He shot backwards. And Eustace Claus is like, I made it rain. I made it rain. Like, he's just so excited that he's making it rain money. And they're like, ah! I'm like, like laughing manically. And his boys, come on, boss. We got to get going. It's like, whoa, that was, I love, love his energy. He's like, that was awesome. That was so fucking awesome. Whoa. He's just so happy with himself. Love, love his energy. Uh, the elite that casino action scene in Car Chase was straight out of James Bond. It really was. No, it definitely was. I, this, this is the best action scene in the movie. And then eventually, uh, uh, Koye and Lupita Nyong'o, they're like, we got to go after him. But he's like, what about T'Challa? It's like, he'll catch up to us. And so they go outside, they get in the car, and they start pursuing um, uh, Ulysses S. Claw and his boys, and they eventually split up. T'Challa recovers. He starts running out. Yeah, Martin Freeman's after him and everything. And he gets uh, Shuri on the line. He says, Shuri, I need your help. And she remotely takes control of, uh, one, of, the, of one of their cars, which is really cool. And so it looks like she's driving in her, like, uh, her uh, laboratory facility in Wakanda. And each and this is cool because when he transfers the, the suits underneath him, like the necklace, so it's like micro, like you know, technology chat, nano machines, it's nano machines. And so they spread around his body, but it, 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 it like tears up the clothes on him. He has like a cool little black flip chat, and he lands in the car. And they're chasing after uh, Lucy's Claw. They're each taking out each car one by one. Lucy's Claw's like, come on, guys, turn on some fucking music, okay? It's not a funeral. <laughs> like, he actually wants, and that's when the music kicks in for this scene. It's really cool. Um, and then each one of them starts to take down all these various claws uh, uh, or cars. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Koye, she fucking throws her Wakandian spear forward and, you know, imp you know impales in the ground. The car goes, boom, these guys just fly right out, and they get mangled. They all, they're killing everybody. They're fucking everybody up. Each one's taken out several of the cars. Eventually, Chad, the last car is Ulysses S. Claw's car. Um, uh, but, you know, and also, um, uh, Ulysses Claw, he's, he has uh, a Koye and um, a Lupita Nyong'o right behind him. And he fuck. I love how, that is like the move he does where he, like, he sits outside the car like this, like of his ass out. He, he aims his hand there and goes, boom, and it just explodes the goddamn car. Okoye was riding on top. She fl flies forward. She, she flies forward as a flip, and she in, uh, impales one of the doors and like slides down almost like a snowboard. While <laughs> while uh, Lupita Nyong'o, she's still in the seat and kind of like skids <laughs> right near. She goes, "Oh my god!" She's kind of shaking because she's like, "Wow, I thought it, was, it would explode the car." Eventually, uh, we cut to uh, T'Challa and Shuri, who's just right behind Claw. You know, he blasts, he blasts them again. But Black Panther, he throw. This is cool. This is such a cool move. He he throws himself forward, rides on the like, runs on the wall like fucking Spider Man, chat, and launches him, uh, himself forward. And grabs onto the side of uh, of of uh, uh, Lucy's S. Claw's car and just jams his hand inside of the uh, uh, the the wheel itself, chat. And just destroys the hubcap until the car just hits a, one of those like uh, pillars right in the middle. It you know it flies. For oh by the way, all the all of the uses claws guys are just getting fucked up. One gets run over by Shuri at one point. She's like, what was that? He's like, don't worry about it. But you know, the car flips forward, chat crashes, and he's you know fucking uh, you know claws just like holy fucking shit. He f falls out of the car, and then we get that one scene where he's like you know, the 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 whites of of uh, Black Panther's masses go away, and we just see uh, Chadwick Boseman's eyes. He's walking towards uh, Claw, with his like his panther claws out, and then Yusuf says, "Claw gets racist." <laughs> He's like, you goddamn dirty savages don't deserve the vibranium. And he fucking tell just grabs him, and goes, Rah! and slams it against the claw, and, and he, he rips off uh, uh, Andy Serkis' robot arm. And he's like, where did you get this? And he goes, I did something that you fucking Wakandians could never do. And, and he's like, Rah! he's about to stab with the kitty cat claw, st stabby kitty cat claw attack. But then Okoye... And uh, Lupita Nyong'o get there and like, fuck, dude, no, T'Challa, not here. The whole world is watching, okay? Don't murder this guy right here. And he goes, fool, I want to stab him so bad. I want to stab him so bad. Eventually, Martin Freeman, he shows up. He, uh, he helped Okoye and Lupita Nyong'o drive him there. And they take him under custody, Chad. The CIA arrests him. And this is so much fun because now we're just in um, an interrogation room where Andy Serkis is like, I see you. I see you. <laughs> just enjoying himself he's like please don't hurt me don't hurt me no more <laughs> i just love it he's just going off losing his goddamn mind um now at this point uh martin freeman's like okay so how do you want to handle this bilbo excuse me bilbo chat bilbo's like oh, how do you want to handle this uh she i'll be good cop then you go in there you be bad cop and then <laughs> okoye and uh t'challa are talking and they're like yeah listen we're, we're just gonna fucking take this guy back to wakanda we'll placate bilbo for right now and he goes and he tells bilbo's like listen 
You go ahead and talk to him, and then we're going to take it back to Wakanda. And then Bilbo's like, listen, man, I don't know why you want him, okay, in your third world country. He's like, okay, be a little racist there, Bilbo. Take it easy. But it's like, he's going to be in CIA custody. This is how it's going to be, okay? I'm trying to help you out. And Bilbo, like, taps T'Challa's uh, chest like this. And Okoye's just like, if he touches you again, I will kill him. <laughs> Tell him that. <laughs> and he's like, Martin, Bilbo's like, what, what, did she, what did she just say? She just goes... Um, he's like, does she speak English? That's what he asked. Does he, does she speak English? And she goes when she wants to. And he's like, all right, take it easy. And then this is a cool, this is a cool goddamn move. He places, he, uh, T'Challa places his hand on, on Bilbo's uh, shoulder and says, we just want to thank you for, for all your assistance with this. Uh, you go ahead and talk to him and I'll talk to him a bit. Okay. And he places a little, um, uh, transmitter chat. So he's able to hear a little bug, able to hear the conversation inside. And so Bilbo goes inside there, and he sits down. That's where we have Andy Serkis going, please don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. No more. <laughs> and then we have the, conf the, the conversation chat between Schmeagle, between crazy South African Schmeagle and American Bilbo chat. And that's when, uh, you know, Claus is like, I don't give a shit anymore. I'm going to tell you everything I need to know. Man, Wakanda, I don't know what the fuck they told you, man. Wakanda, they have advanced technology. You know, because the, the, you know, you, Bilbo's like, you stole all their vibranium years ago in 1992. He's like, no, I didn't, man. I stole, like, an insignificant amount to them. Stuff that they would fucking lose in a warehouse somewhere. They have just thousands of metric tons of vibranium in that country. They're, all their technology is based off of it. They're the most advanced country in the world. And at this point... McCoy is like, I gotta go in there and fucking kill him before he tells Bilbo more. But then Chad, oh no, the fucking wall explodes. It's like, boom, right behind Ulysses S. Claw. And we see Chad, we see, oh, I forgot to mention this. During the uh, museum heist, uh, 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 Michael Jordan, uh, not Michael Jordan, Jesus Christ, uh, 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 Michael B. Jordan, yeah, Michael B. Jordan, uh, Killmonger, he steals this African mask and he's wearing it right now. It's really sick and cool. But he grabs, him and his girlfriend, they grab, they literally lift Ulysses' claw off the floor. He's just going, ha, ah! He's like, yes, yes, we're doing it, you're doing it. And they're taken away. And while these other people are just shooting at all the people inside, uh, one person is shooting at uh, Lupita Nyong'o, uh, Bilbo, he jumps in front of her, takes the bullet in the back, right in the spine. Ooh, and he goes down, shit, he goes down. Well, T'Challa, he goes after uh, Killmonger and uses his claw. And, but then, you know, of course, fucking, you know, Killmonger, he's got a goddamn grenade launcher. She blasts, blasts T'Challa with a block that knocks him back. But then while he's recovering, Chad, T'Challa notices as we're getting inside of a, of a pedophile van, she had a windowless pedophile van, notices the necklace with a ring on it, Chad. The same ring that he has that was his father's ring. He goes, what the fuck is that? It's like, mm, something's afoot, something's afoot. Uh, a foot and Killmonger and Ulysses S. Claw, they, they, they escape in the, in the Napito van. And the kill, or then um, uh, Chadwick Boseman, he goes back and checks on Bilbo. And Bilbo not doing good, Jeff. Bilbo not doing He's like, he has got shot in the spine. And they're like, he is not going to survive this. Uh, we need to take him to Wakanda. And Koi is like, no, we can't. He'll die. We don't take him to Wakanda. And then uh, uh, T'Challa, he puts one of the beads, one of the glowy beads inside of Martin Freeman's back. And he goes, Gah. it's like, that'll keep him stabilized for right now. But we got to take him back to Wakanda. And they go back to Wakanda chat. And, and Shuri's like, what have you brought me? He's like, oh, another broken white boy to fix, which is a reference chat to the, uh, the OG broken white boy uh, Winter Soldier chat. One, Bucky Barnes, right? And she does her magic chat. She does the operation. And good old Bilbo, he is right as rain chat. He's feeling a lot better. And, of course, he wakes up. And he's going, where the fuck am I? And sure, he's just like, ah, you know, Jesus, colonizer, you scared me. <laughs> She's like, wait, wait what? <laughs> That's where the whole meme came of colonizer chat right there. And she, he's like, how long have I been here? She goes, like, a day. And he's like, bullet wounds to the spine don't heal in a goddamn day. She's like, they do here in Wakanda. And she, this is a lot of exposition right here. She explains the monorail system. A monorail. The monorail system in Wakanda. She had technology. And Martin Freeman's like, holy fucking shit. I had no idea. He's like, nah, you do, colonizer. All right? You shouldn't underestimate us. He's like, I won't. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, he has the white guilt. Yeah, now the white guilt's affecting him. Uh, but now, Chad, we cut. We cut to, uh, what is it? Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, Chadwick Boseman, he's taking care of uh, Bilbo and stuff. And everyone's like, yeah, we're all friends. But then, you know, Daniel Kaluuya comes in and he goes, hey, so did you get Claw? And, you know, 
T'Challa's just like, hey, man, listen, um, he, he escaped. He escaped. And he goes, I thought it'd be different. You're no different than your piece of shit dad. He's, T'Challa's like, what the fuck, man? Don't call my dad a piece of shit. He was a piece of shit, and you're a loser. You're a loser, T'Challa, and I hate you. I fucking hate you. And he runs away. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's not good. <laughs> oh, man, I didn't know you'd have that kind of reaction, chat. And Nicole's chasing after her husband, her man. She's like, don't say that to our case. Like, I'll say where the fuck I want to. And he runs off. Meanwhile, Chad, meanwhile, we cut back to uh, Killmonger. He listens to his claw. He listens to his claw. He's like, hey, listen, Killmonger, thanks for the fucking assist, uh, man. That, I really appreciate that. Killmonger's like, hey, no problem, man. We're partners. He's like, hell yeah. We're, listen, I'm going to go hide in Joburg for a little bit. That's, you know, Johannesburg in South Africa, where Killmonger is from. I'll hide there for a little bit, and I'll wire you your money soon. He goes, listen, oh, don't worry about the money, man. The only thing you can do for me right now is just drop me off at Wakanda. That'd be great. He goes, Wakanda? What, are you crazy? I'm not taking you there. And then he sh and then Killmonger takes out his gun. And he shoots the pilot because they have this little plane. They're going to fly there. And Killmonger, you know, uses his claws like, what the fuck? And he grabs Killmonger's girlfriend. He goes, I'll fucking kill her, man. I'll fucking kill her. And she's just saying, I'm sorry, sorry Eric. I'm sorry. He goes, it's okay. It's okay. And boom, he shoots his girlfriend in the face and she's dead. And Kilmer's like, wow. And he fucking runs off. He runs off and he takes cover. And he's like, what the fuck is wrong with this guy? And he's shooting at him. But Killmonger, Chad, he's an expert goddamn marksman. Boom, one shot. Hits, hits, hits a good old uh, Schmeagle right in the tummy. And he goes down. And then Killmonger walks over. And he's like, what, why, what are you doing this? You, you, you must be insane to think you want to go to, to Wakanda. He goes, nah, man, nah, I want to go to Wakanda. And he reveals his lip, because they're in the movie chat. For the war dogs, they have this, like, the, the spies that uh, Wakanda places around the world. They have a secret tattoo when you, you put your lip down like this, and there's, like, this blue markings right there. And it glows. And they're like, oh, that's how you know. And he reveals that he has those blue markings. And fucking Andy Serkis, you know, uh, Ulysses' claws is just like... <laughs> You know, I thought you were just some crazy American. <laughs> and then fucking Killmonger shoots him. He shoots him, and he's dead. Schmeagle is now dead. Now, again, it makes sense for the story itself with Ulysses' Claw, but, man, you, Andy Serkis was having so much fun with this role, and he brought so much energy to the movie. I would have loved to have seen him in a, in a sequel. Now we won't ever get that. That's what I've been saying for years, Chad. Like, if they ever want to do, like, a uses as claw S character, or, you know, like, um, a, I, I don't know. I always said Craven the Hunter would be a cool villain to have for Black Panther, Chad. Whether we'll ever get that, I'm not sure. I, I'm very much of the opinion that Marvel villains should be shared among all the heroes, Chad. You hear rumors about Doctor Doom possibly being Black Panther, like whatever, whatever it is. I always like that idea that you have these villains who constantly fight all these different heroes, Chad. So I don't think Craven should just be a villain to Spider-Man. I think it'd be awesome if he was also a villain to Black Panther. But I don't know if we'll ever get that. We'll see. But he shoots and kills him, Chad. And you know, uh, it's like, wow, okay, didn't expect that. And uh, then we have uh, uh, we we cut to uh, T'Challa. He wants to talk to Forrest Whitaker, chap, because he has some questions. Okay, he has some questions. He's very confused about what he saw when he saw that ring. And he goes to the sacred uh, purple orchid room, chat, where they get the power of the Black Panther. And he's like, "Everyone, please leave. I gotta talk to Forrest Whitaker." And Forrest Whitaker says, "What's up?" And he goes, "Hey, man, I need to know the truth. Okay, there's some. I saw some shit, and I need some answers. All right." And he goes, uh, "What kind of truth?" He's like, "When I went when." When I was fighting fucking Ulysses S. Claw, someone broke him out of the interrogation room, and they had a ring like this one. Now, the only people that have rings like these are, are Wakandan royalty. My father, and I believe his brother, Nujobu. What the hell? What, what, what happened? What happened? What happened to Nujobu? Last time I heard about Nujobu, okay, he disappeared. He left us. So what? this guy has this. What's going on? And Forrest Whitaker is like, some secrets, you know, should not be revealed, you know? And he walks away. He's like, excuse me. He goes, I promised the king I would never share this secret. He's like, I am your king. And he goes, oh, shit, I'm sorry. He goes, you would tell me what the hell happened. And then, chat, we go back to that first scene in the movie. We cut back. He says, okay, your uncle Nujobu. He was placed in, uh, in America, in California, as a war dog. He took that mission. He met a woman there, an American woman. He fell in love, and they had a child there. They had a child. Uh, what, during his time there, he was radicalized. He helped Ulysses S. Claw steal vibranium and plan to attack specific targets in the United States. Your father went there to confront him. Then we get the scene, Chad. We get the scene that was in the beginning of the movie where after, like, uh, uh, T'Chaka was like, you will uh, come back to Wakanda to face, you know, to face justice and for your crimes, for your alleged crimes. 
And Joe was like, fuck that. And he takes out his gun. And I pull out my gun. And he goes to shoot. He goes to shoot Forrest Whitaker. But, oh, no, T'Chaka jumps in forward. And he stabs him. He kitty cat stabs with the claws right into Njobu's tum-tum. And he dies, Shaq. And Forrest Whitaker is like, your father protected me when your uncle tried to kill me. And he was like, oh, my God, no. And he stabbed him. And he died. He died right there. He left him on the apartment floor. And T'Challa's like, what about the ki- what about his son? What about his kid? And he's like, yeah, we left him. <laughs> it's like, you just left him? He goes, he was not Wakandian. He was not one of us. And T'Challa's like, that was fucking wrong, man. And then we cut, Chad. We cut, and we see little Eric Killmonger. Or Eric Stevens as was his actual name. Little Eric Stevens, and uh, he's in the basketball court. He was the kid that saw the Wakandian uh, shuttle chat take off, and we see him run. We see him run to the apartment complex, run up the stairs, should go in the door, and he sees his father dead, bled out, Chad, because he got stabbed in the tummy, and he's, he's cradling his father's dead ha- head in his in his lap, Chad, crying. And Charles is like, you you might have just created our greatest enemy. He goes, hey, man, them, that's what happened. He's like, that is not right. That is not the way. That is really fucked up and wrong and so now chat we cut and we see eric Kilmer, which by the way can i just clearly <laughs> michael b jordan is a fan of dragon ball z because his outfit is straight is straight up vegeta is vegeta's outfit chat i mean i'm I, he must be because the, the blue and the yellow and the white it's like that's pretty cool the way chris reviews movies makes it sound like he got adhd <laughs> I'm all over the place. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, man. Tachak was fucked up with that shit. He was, he was, he, that was bad. He just left that kid there. And was like, you left the kid without his father. You murdered his father. You can probably an explanation. Yeah, we'll get to that shit. He's coming out with love as anime. He, you know, he rocks it. It's like, there you go. Live action Vegeta will work really well. The outfit, certainly. I love, I love the design for his initial. I wish he kept it the rest of the movie. But I love his first, in, like, version of his outfit. Uh, for this, it's, it's just like, wow, it looks really slick, really cool, and so, but we see him, Chet, he's landing in the outskirts of, of Wakanda, near the border tribe, Daniel Kalu and his boys, they go to confront him, and he goes, who are you, and he's like, I brought a gift for y'all, and he fucking throws it, Chet, he throws this, this dead body wrapped in, uh, in, a, in a trash bag, and it's revealed to be Ulysses S. Claw, and Daniel Coy's like, you're my best friend now, you're my best friend, he's like, we're best friends, they do the bro Arnold Schwarzenegger, Carl Weathers bro fist, Chet, like, yeah, very excited, Star Diva. Thank you so much for the 40 bitties. I hope you're enjoying the review so far, Star Diva. And so at this point, uh, Daniel uh, 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 Kalua takes Killmonger hostage and they call a uh, uh, prisoner and they call a meeting. They call a meeting chat. Uh, all the count, all the councilmen and women of Wakanda and, and you know King T'Challa and the Queen Mother and Shuri are all there. And they bring in uh, Eric Stevens, the accused against crimes against Wakanda. And he walks in and you know uh, T'Challa, you know, he, he goes, oh, it's so cool. And he's just like, I'm, I'm, I'm here in your house. I'm here to talk to you. And T'Challa is like, I did, I did. No, this is great because he says, I did something for, for all you guys that your king couldn't even fucking do. I brought Ulysses S. Claw. And T'Challa just gets up and you hear the bum, 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 bum. You hear those, those bongos. You hear those bongos in the background, chat. And he goes, I don't know if he's walking. He's like, well, he said some serious shit. And it's great because everyone else like gets up, stands attention. They're pointing their spears at him. And the 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 body language of Michael B. Jordan this scene is fucking great. Because he goes, Jesus Christ, take it easy, everybody. <laughs> I'm just saying. And, he, and, and Charles is like, listen, the only reason why I don't kill you right here, right now, is because I know who you are. And he goes, oh, okay, that's nice, man. And he goes, you know, I'm going to allow you. I'm going to lie to leave, but you got to tell me one thing. Why, why are you here? What do you want? And he goes, I want the throne. And everyone starts laughing. It's like, ha, 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 ha. You have no claim to the throne. You have no claim to the throne. And, you know, uh, 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 you know Killmonger goes, tell him who I am. Tell him who I am, man. And the child is like, no, no, take, take him away. Take him away. And he goes, uh, tell, you know, ask, ask him, ask him, who, who am I? Who am I? Come on, someone ask me. And T'Challa, he goes to sit down, and one of the guys says, who are you? He goes, my name. And he, and he tells him, my name is fucking, uh, I get, he had, uses his, uh, his, his Wakandian name, which I don't remember his name, but he says, I am the son of Prince Najobu. I am one of the heirs to the Wakandian throne. They go, holy shit, is this, is this goddamn true? Really? It's crazy. Also, I forgot yet. There was a previous scene before all this where uh, Bilbo reveals who Eric Stevens actually is. He is. He did work for the CIA. He's he's in special ops chat. He's a genius. He went to MIT for his graduate degree. And his special uh, profession chat is he um, embeds himself in countries and destabilize governments chat. He whether it be you know a democracy or a dictatorship or a monarchy, they take out the leadership, they take out the election system, and they they and they seat whoever they want to seat on there. 
and take power. This is what he's this is what he's very good at. That's what he does. He was trained by the whites. He was trained by the whites, chat. Uh, and this is how it's all set up. And sure, he reveals your name is Eric Stevens. Like, now nah, my name's not fucking Eric Stevens, princess. I love his reveal, too, because after he says all this, Angel Bass is like, There's, that's, that's not possible. And he goes, hi, auntie, which, <laughs> which is so fucking funny. I love that. And they're going, wow, well, he has a legitimate claim to the throne. And he's just like, yeah, I want, I want the goddamn throne. Everyone's like, no, the process will take weeks to set up. And he's like, I don't need no fucking process, okay? All I need is him. I don't need a mega audience to kick his ass. And we're like, all right, shit, let, let's, let's fucking do it. Let's go ahead and, and fight over the mantle of Black Panther chat. So they go to that little uh, ceremonial waterfall where T'Challa fought Maku. And they get all set up, and there, there's a fucking throwdown between... Um, we also see, this is cool, so for like, um, you, you see on... Um, on uh, Michael B. Jordan's body. He has these like little bumps and he's these cuts that he's made, chat, for all the people that he's killed in his entire life. And there was a lot of fucking cuts on his goddamn body. Oh, yeah, no, I got to that part. I, talk, I talked about uh, uh, Killmonger killing Ulysses' his claw. Yeah, you got to watch the VOD. It was fun. Um, and so he got all these cuts on his body, chat. And they go ahead, they set themselves up, and they strip the powers of the Black Panther. They take it away from uh, T'Challa chat, and they get into a bit a bit of a tussle. Now, it looks like, looks like uh, T'Challa has the upper hand, but uh-uh-uh. And then Killmonger, he gets, a, he gets a second win, and he starts kicking T'Challa's ass chat. Stabbing him in the tummy, throwing him around chat, and he just beats the ever-living shit out of him chat. Until he's like, ah! And he throws him over a waterfall. He's like, ah! T'Challa falls into a waterfall chat, and boom, dead dead Black Panther. And he goes, is this your king? Is this your king? No, I'm your king. And Angela Bassett, she gets so scared. Her hair turns white. Sure, he's crying. Being the Wongo's like, fuck, we gotta get the hell out of here. They all leave. Uh, also, also, um, Chad, uh, or, uh, Michael B. Jordan, he stabs Forrest Whitaker in the tummy. He goes, go! And that, that really makes uh, uh, T'Challa very sad. He's like, no, Forrest Whitaker! But he gets stabbed in the tummy. He goes, fuck you, Uncle James. He remembers Uncle James. He remembers when Forrest Whitaker betrayed his father, he's like, ah, I'll get you back. And he did, Chad, stabbed in the tummy. That's, that's, that's the, the Killmonger move. And so he throws him over the waterfall, and they crown him as king. But shit is not going well in Wakanda. Uh, Wakanda. Because Okoye, she says, listen, what happened was fucked up, but I am loyal to the throne. I am loyal to my new king. She's like, you're fucking king. That king just killed T'Challa. He, he, she, 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 he killed the love of my life. I loved him. I love my country. And she's like, we got to overthrow him. And Okoye's just like, we can't overthrow him. He's like, we have to save our country. She's like, I should have expected this from a spy. She says, yeah, I'm a spy. I'm a spy. But I also loved him, and I want to save our country. If you're not going to help, then I'm going to fucking leave. And she takes off, but Koi, she's like, ah, it's complicated. Very complicated. Um, and so she goes with Angela Bassett and Shuri, and they take off. They go, and they, oh, and they also... They also steal a little bit of the purple orchid chat while this big ceremony is going down for Killmonger, right? So they do the whole thing where they, they give him the, the, the purple stuff, and they bury him alive. He's like, blah, blah, and he has his own flashback. He has his own little, little uh, vision. Where him, a little boy, going to the apartment chat. Uh, and it's cool because we see, it's, it's like, because I guess each person experiences something different. Like this really traumatic thing that happened. Like when T'Challa did the vision first, he saw the death of his father, uh, you know, uh, during the events of Civil War. And he meets his father. And then you have uh, Eric Killmonger reliving the events of his father's death. He goes to one of the secret panels in the door. He takes it out, which has all the information on Wakanda chat, like this journal. And how to like the teaches himself the Wakandian language and like all the history of the country. And then Sterling K. Brown appears as Prince Najobu and they start having a, a conversation. Uh, you know, saying like I've I've always wanted to take you to Wakanda. That was my dream, but I don't know if these people would have accepted you. And uh, little Eric Killmonger says, why wouldn't they accept me? Because they would say you're lost. He's like, I'm not lost. I'm right here. And then eventually Sterling came Brown's is like, no tears for me. Like, you're not crying for me. And we cut to adult uh, Michael B. Jordan chat to Eric Killmonger, and he, who is crying now, who is crying. And he says, everybody dies. Everybody dies. And we have Najoba says, I failed you as a father. That I've set you down this path, and I'm sorry. And then, you know, uh, Eric Kimmonger comes out of the vision, goes, rrr, rrr. he's like all crazy and shit. And they go, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. You can settle down. And he's like, well, you're now fucking king. And this is this is the power of the Black Panther. They give him more purple stuff. He gets the power of Black Panther. And he's like, yeah, this is where we grow our purple orchids for, you know, the future Black Panthers and kings of Wakanda. He goes, yeah, that shit's over, by the way. You can burn all that shit. And they're like, what are you talking about? We can't burn it. And he just grabs this lady by the throat and holds her up. He's like, when I tell you to do something, you're going to fucking do it. 
bitch, and they burn all the orchids. But before they, before they burn them all, and you have Lupita Nyong'o, she grabs one of them, and she actually grabs one of them because they got to take it to someone, someone to fight uh, Eric Killmonger for the throne of Wakanda. And they all travel uh, to the Jabori tribe chat in the mountains, and they go and reach uh, Umbaku. And, you know, Umbaku hears about all this crazy shit. It's like, hi, how you guys doing? Listen, um, man, you can stay here and stuff, but what, what do you want with me? And they're like, listen, Umbaku, you're the only, you and your people are the only ones that can overthrow uh, uh, fucking Eric Killmonger, Michael B. Jordan. And we brought this we can give you the power of the Black Panther. And he stands up. He's like, it almost looks like he's considering this, like, oh, this is what everything I've ever wanted. I want to be king of Wakanda. But he, despite his uh, kind of, you know, uh, like brutish, if you will, chat, kind of his like, ah, whatever uh, personality. You know, his flippant personality is just like, ah, whatever. He's like, ah, he's bound by honor, chat. He's bound by honor. And he has great respect for the traditions of Wakanda. And people, he has, he's got a good heart chat, despite what he typically, the facade he puts on. And he goes, I have something to show you. I have something to show you. And he takes them, chat, to the body of T'Challa. He said, we found him in the river. Uh, and they're like, why is he covered? He's because they live in a mountain, mountainous region. Chad, why are you covered in snow? Because we take him out of the snow, we kind of put him in a cryogenic stasis. If we take him out, he'll definitely die. And they said, okay, well, the only way he could survive is we, we give him the, the, the purple stuff, the, the, the purple orchid. And they put that, they shoved that shit down his throat, and it's like he'll have to survive the, um, he still, exactly, he still has a coat. He still has a coat. Um, and, they, and they shoved that shit down his throat, and he's like, Rrr! he's convulsing everything. But he, you know, he needs to fight through it. And if he, he's able to, if he survives, and he's strong enough to be king and become Black Panther once again. And we cut to Chadwick Boseman, who's having the vision. And he confronts his father about the shit that happened with Eric Kilmar. He goes, hey, man, I found out about some fucked up shit that you did to your, your little brother. And he goes, listen, I had to stab him in the tummy and because he betrayed Wakanda. And he goes, OK, you did that. You know, still kind of fucked up. But why did you leave his son there? He goes, that little shit wasn't what kind. He goes, you're an asshole, dad. And he goes, what are you yelling at me for? Because you created our greatest enemy. What you did was absolutely wrong. You should have taken him back to Wakanda. He was your family. He's like, he's not my family. He is our family. He is our family, and you betrayed him. And now you've, you've, you've created this own threat. And I will not do the same. And then he starts talking about... For so long, Wakanda has been isolationist. We have, we have ignored the problems of the world while we could be helping so many people. And, and I see that, and I see that you and all these other kings and queens appear before him. It's like, all of you were wrong. Every single one of you. And he shames them. Shame on you. Shame on you. All of you are wrong. When I, when I, if I fucking become king again, and I fix the situation, everything's going to change. Everything's going to change. You know, like, oh, shit. Okay, fine. Do, do what you want. So he's like, I will, Dad. And he comes out of his vision. And they're like, yeah, he's alive. He's like, can I have a fucking blanket, please? I'm so cold. And then we cut back to uh, Michael B. Jordan. Chat talked about Eric Kimmong, a great re re reverse shot. We're kind of, we're stuck upside down until it writes the camera. It's like really cool. He's wearing the golden jaguar uh, necklace. He goes, okay, guys, time, now we have to, mu we must start Operation Kill the Whites. And they're like, we're going to kill the whites. Yeah, we're going to kill all the whites. We have... Uh, war dogs embedded in every major country and government around the world, okay? There are two billion people on this planet that look like us that can't fight back. So we're going to give them a whole bunch of weapons, and we're going to kill all the whites. And they're like, um, uh, Okoye's just like, I don't, I don't know if that's a good idea. But then fucking her husband, do Chad, her husband, do. Uh, Daniel Kalua is like, I also second kill all the whites. And they're like, all right, I guess we're going to kill all the white people. He goes, hell yeah, guys, Operation Kill the Whites, a go. And so they start, you know, make them start prepping all these deliveries, chat, to the, all their and war dogs. And they're going to give all their these weapons to all these black people who are then going to proceed to kill all the whites. Meanwhile, uh, uh, Chadwick Boseman, he's still really cold. And he's like, hey, Mubaku, uh, really want to, oh, he starts talking to his family first. Uh, talking to Angela Bassett and Shuri, and he's like, he has, you know, uh, Michael B. Jordan has control of the military, overcome his resources, we have to uh, uh, attack now, and he's, you know, Shuri's like, I'm going to help you, brother, okay, I'm just not going to stay here, I'm going to help you, and even Martin Freeman, Bilbo, he's like, I'm going to help you too, he's like, hey, come on, we're all in this together at this point, and, and you know, and then Mubaku is like, are you done? He starts, like, fake snoring, like, are you done? <laughs> and then um, T'Challa gets up, and he goes, Mubaku, Lord Mubaku, hey, listen, man, I just, uh, you know, want to thank you for everything you've done. If I can ask you for one more favor, can my mom stay here? And he goes, he's like, of course, of course. And he's like, listen, I owed you a great debt. You spared my life, and that is what I owed you. And he's like, listen, 
um, all of Wakanda needs to stand together. He's like, oh, Wakanda, you're the first king to come here in centuries. He's like, yes, I cannot repent for, this, for the mistakes of other kings, okay? But I, I, can, I can start doing things the way I want to do them now. And I'm asking you, Lord Mubaku, can you please help us fight against Killmonger, okay? He's going to kill all the whites. And Mubaku's like, nah. <laughs> He's like, nope. And he's like, all right. I guess it's just going to be me, Shuri, and Bilbo. Let's, can my mom stay here, though? Mom can stay here. Great. Okay, can't wait. And then, Chad, we cut back to Wakanda. And Operation Kill the Whites is a go. He's loading up all the machines and things. Got these spears. Like, look at this fucking spear. This sonic boom weapon. It can take down a goddamn tank. And the, in the hands of our people, they'll, 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 we'll be able to take over the world. The sun will never set on the Wakandan Empire. And you know, Koi is like, this is really fucked up and weird. Like, this isn't good. And now they, they're like, all right, everybody, launch the goddamn ship. They start launching all the ships, shall we? See the first one go out, and then boom! It shot out of the sky, and it crashes on the ground. And we hear this dramatic music come up, Chad. And who is up right on top of the wreckage, Chad? Black motherfucking Panther, Chad. And he walks, and this is the line that got me because I got a little teary eyed during the scene. Because uh, he says, it's like, as you can see, I am not dead. And it's like, oh my God, that, that, that scene totally plays differently now with just the the sudden passing of Chadwick Boseman. It really does sit differently with you now. But he's just walking for you. You have this dramatic music. And, you know, Killmonger's like, hey, man, all that king shit's all over right now, okay? It's like, uh-uh, the fucking duel is still going on, okay? I'm still alive, and I have not yielded. And he's just like, ah, Daniel Kaluuya, kill this motherfucker. Daniel Kaluuya's just like, ah, uh, uh, I, uh, I don't know. And Okoye's like, don't fucking listen to him. Don't do that. And he goes, ah, I'm going to try. And he blows the horn. And they all start running towards... Uh, uh, you know, Black Panther chat. They're gonna kill him, the Border Tribe. And Okoye's like, all right, fuck this bullshit. You are no goddamn king, Michael B. Jordan. You're a piece of shit. And he goes, come on, honey, let's go. And he transforms in his golden jaguar, uh, uh, you know, Black Panther outfit chat. And he's got a spear and a sword. And they start a fighting chat. They start fighting. Meanwhile, Black Panther, he starts kicking the asses of all the Border Tribe chat, just throwing them all around. They, you know, using the kinetic energy against them and things. And you also have some of the uh, Royal Guard come in there, and they start fighting. And then, you know, uh, T'Challa and uh, Daniel Kaluuya, they square off. And, you know, T'Challa beats a shit out of him, Chad, because he's just got a, he's got like a little sword. And he goes, Daniel Kaluuya, we were like friends, man. Okay, just don't do this. Don't do Don't fucking do it. He's like, ah, fuck you. I'm going to call on my rhinos. And he blows the horn, Chad, and these giant CGI rhinos of armor start uh, coming towards him. And this is when it gets like, I'm not a big fan of the CGI here. It's a little wonky, especially in the rhinos. I like the idea of giant rhinos of armor coming in here to save the day or to, you know, fight in the battle. But still, it's just like, ah, it's just, just needed some rendering, I think. And they run in there and they start just fucking, and that's the other thing, too. When you have giant fucking rhinos going through a battlefield chat, like, the fact they're not just stepping on people and just, like, smushing them, it's just like, come on. Yeah, it's like, it, it, that's why it doesn't really work for me aesthetically. The action here is just not well filmed, in my opinion. It's it's one of my big. This is my really big like the 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 claw thing. I can let that glow go because it made sense of the movie. But this finale, it's just like yeah, it's, it's lacking. It's definitely lacking in something. And I just don't think the choreography here the, and the CGI really. Uh, they didn't hit, they didn't nail it. They didn't nail it. I like I, I would have. The Russos, I think, would have done a much better job of a scene like this we saw with Civil War or Winter Soldier or Endgame or Infinity War. They're, just, they're better when it comes to the action than Coogler. But the the drama, at least, Chad, I think, you know, helps it, helps it along. But they don't have this big battle scene. The Rhinos are kicking all that ass. You know, Black Panther's trying to fight against them. Meanwhile, uh, Shuri... Okoye and Bilbo, they infiltrate the Wakandan factory chat, and she's like, Bilbo, you got a remote control pilot one of these ships to take down uh, the, the ships that are initiating Operation Kill the Whites. And so he's like, okay. And he goes in the sh uh, remote controls the ship chat, and he blasts all of those Wakandan ships out of the air, preventing Operation uh, Kill the Whites from uh, starting. I was like, yeah, good. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Shuri and Okoye, they go up there. Shur yeah, Shuri and Okoye, they go up there and uh, start fighting. Oh, no, Shuri and Lupita Nyong'o, excuse me, chat. Shuri and Lupita Nyong'o, they go up there, and they start fighting uh, Eric Killmonger. Eric Killmonger, he kills a lot of the uh, the of Okoye's guards, kicks Okoye's ass, throws her around, uh, throws Lupita Nyong'o out, about to just stab the shit out of Shuri. As all shit's going down, eventually Mubaku's like, I'm coming, baby. Mubaku says, remember when I said I wasn't going to help? I'm going to help. He comes in there, and he starts beating the shit. Uh, and his, uh, his guerrilla warriors chat start beating the shit out of the border tribe, and they pacify them. They stop them, chat. Yay. Excellent. While T'Challa, he runs up on Eric Killmonger, throws himself upon him, chat, and they start having a battle in midair. 
as they're falling into the caverns, the Vibranium Caverns of Wakanda. And they start having a little battle chat on the monorail tracks. It's, and, like, the choreography here is better. Like, when they're falling, it's, it's just a lot of CGI. It's a little too much. But I did like the choreography, how they were moving around, chat. But, you know, fucking uh, uh, T'Challa bamboozles Eric Killmonger, chat, and he stabs him in the tummy. He gets, he gets, there's your own tummy stab, sir. He goes, Goo! and he goes right in there. He goes, fucking good move. I like even myths. Good move, man. <laughs> good move. And then this is when Killmonger goes, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry I did all this. It's my bad, man, my bad. He says, my dad, he always told me how beautiful Wakanda is. How the sunsets in Wakanda are the most beautiful in the world. And Charles like, I'll show you a sunset. And he takes him, Chad, he takes him. And they go out right outside this the this the giant cave with the, the Black Panther right above it. And they they see this uh, sunset. And this this is one of the best scenes in the movie. This might be one of the best scenes in the film, if not the best scene. Just these two people just sitting here. And uh, Killmonger just looking out on the horizon, Chad, the Wakandan city and the, and the mountains, everything else. And he says, it's beautiful. And T'Challa is like, listen, maybe there's a way to save you, to, to heal you. And Killmonger looks at him and he goes, save me so you can just lock me up. Nah, nah, I'm not, I'm not about all that. No, just, just, just let me die and bury me in the ocean like my ancestors. Because even they knew a life, uh, a, a death was better uh, than a life in bondage. And he rips out the dagger, Che, rips out the dagger from his body, uh, you know, which was preventing him from dying. And he, he passes away. Probably he stabbed him in the heart. He rips it out, and he falls over, Chat, dead, seemingly dead. People are like, please bring him back. People are like, please bring him back, which I would not be shocked if they pull some shit like that. And he dies. Oh, uh, Then also, Okoye is very mad at her man, Daniel Kaluuya, Che. It's like, shame on you. You went against your woman, man. Come on. So he fucked up. So things, uh, things are going great. And so I was like, wow, okay, we recovered, we recovered. We then cut, yeah, we then cut to, uh, it's like several weeks later or something, and uh, uh, Black Panther, Shuri, and a whole bunch of people, uh, Bilbo, they're at the United Nations. Wakanda's going to make a big announcement, yeah, make a big announcement at the UN about its isolation policies. They're going to change some shit. They're going to change some shit. And you have these, uh, these snide reporters who are like, what can fucking Wakanda offer the world? You're a third world country of sheep herders. And one of these other nations say that. And Bilbo's just sitting back there. It's like, man, wait till you see the shit that they got. And fu- I love it because Chadwick Boseman just has a sly grin on his face. Like, oh, we're going to show you. But you think that's the ending? No. We then cut to the same neighborhood chat that we saw in 1992 with uh, uh, Eric Killmonger and his friends 30 years later. We see uh, these kids playing basketball. We see Shuri and um, T'Challa staying inside this, the, the right, like right inside the the the, the basketball uh, uh, court, and they're like looking at the buildings that was uh, the apartment complex for uh, Eric Killmonger and uh, Sterling K. Brown, and like it's going to be condemned. But Shuri's like, "What well, this building's going to be condemned?" He's like, "No, it's not. I bought that building. I bought this building. I bought that building. I bought that building, and this is going to be turned into one of the many, many Wakandian uh, research and youth outreach centers." And uh, uh, Lupita Nyong'o is going to be running many of these outreach centers, uh, making sure they have the resources they need. And you're going to help them with the research and, and child uh, and, you know, child engagement. And she's like, whoa. And uh, this is like, so what, what are we starting? He's like, we're starting right now. And we see above them, the ship is right above them, Chad, and it clicks on. All these kids are like, holy shit, as the ship lowers itself down on the basketball court, and they all go over, and like, whoa, holy shit, can you believe this shit? And they're like, oh, man, we can fucking, we can take this apart easy. And Shuri goes over, you don't want to take that apart. And she goes like, who are you? She's like, I'm from Wakanda. And they're like, what's a Wakanda? What's Wakanda? And this one kid, this great moment, Chad, this one little boy doesn't look at them. He looks at uh, T'Challa, and he goes over to him, and he's like, who are you? And, you know, T'Challa just looks down on this kid and smiles. And that, my friends, that is Black Panther. Um, you know, uh, uh, yeah, a, 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 mo- a movie I think that has just gotten better over time. I mean, you know, especially with the, the sadly, the tragic circumstances that, you know, that now surround each other, the passing of Chadwick Boseman. Like, just certain scenes, is, they, certain scenes just hit a new way that they didn't before. Uh, and they, not that they didn't before, but they, they did hit, but they hit even more now. This is his passing. So, uh, incredible acting. 
uh, really the, 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 the production behind it, the world that they create of Wakanda is great. The villains, both Ulysses S. Claw and Killmonger, great. I mean, at this point, Killmonger, I would say, was the best villain. It, is, it still is one of the best villains in the MCU. Thanos is, is still my favorite, but Killmonger is a very close second, very close second. But yeah, no, incredible performances, everyone. My only big critique is I think some of the action and CGI is a little rough. It's not as well choreographed as it should be. There is some good action scenes, but the, the, the finale just it just it lacked that punch that some of the more recent Marvel movies have had. C certainly the ones where the Russos have directed. But still, overall, yeah, a really, really great movie. I'm um, very interested to see what they're going to do with the sequel. But yeah, for right now, should I give it a... I'd give it a I give it a high full price. I give it a high full price, Chet. Really enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed this review. I knew it would be a long one. It took me probably nearly close to two hours, probably an hour and a half, Chet. But there you go. Fucking love it. It's in my top five. Yeah, it's great. It's it's really good. Five out of five pantas. <laughs> yeah, an absolutely great movie. Very sad cheer both past Wakanda, Wakanda forever, Chet. My favorite villain is not Dormammu. <laughs> Dormammu, I've come to bargain. No. <laughs> Commander was lower tier Thanos. Like I said, he didn't want to kill half the year. He just wanted to kill all the whites. Operation Kill the Whites is a go. <laughs> Too tall high profile price for you as well. Nice, nice, nice. Mm. I hope you basically, because everything you just said is the child and his dad's conversation. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I hope you got, I'm going to go back and read the chat because I know when I go on these reviews, chat, it's hard for me to go back and read the chat at the same time. But I hope you liked it. I hope you liked it. Thank you, Show of the Timmy's. My heart's a pit of pattern. <laughs> Did you guys like when I when I invented Operation Kill the Whites? <laughs> did that tickle you? <laughs> like it did me? <laughs> oh, Chad, great review. Thank you, Lee. Thank you, guys. No, thank you for all the support. Oh, there's been some gems in there during your reviews. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad you. I'm glad you liked it. I always like to go back and see what you guys said during the reviews because I'm just fully focused on the camera. I'm gonna, I don't want to lose steam. I don't want to lose steam when I'm doing this. You bum back. Thank you, Chad. Thank Corbett. It was the first Marvel Studios film to win Oscars. That's right. The film won three Oscars for Best Production Design, which it definitely deserved. Best Costume Design, which it definitely deserved. Best Original Score. Also, oh, oh, I forgot to mention, Chad. The, 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 my, my apologies. The end credits, the whole, uh, are, are great. How they have, it's the sand effect. I told you about, like, the holograms, where they have, like, Chadwick Boseman. They have Eric Killmonger and Angela Bassett. And, and all, all that is so, so cool. The end credits are really good. Like, usually, it's like, oh, end credits, like, whatever. But Marvel end credits can be really fun. Like, it's up there with, uh, to me, with, you know, Civil War end credits and, and Winter Soldier and Infinity War and Endgame. Just, like, some really imaginative end credits. And the end credits scene is where we, we established that Bucky Barnes is in Wakanda chat. He's, uh, they're helping him with his uh, PTSD and um, mind manipulation. Uh, from Hydra. That's the end credit scene chat, which then leads into Infinity War. Because Infinity War is the next movie after Black Panther. I th no, I think it's Thor Ragnarok. I think I think what happened is like in in terms of the 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 timeline, Thor Ragnarok is the most is the one that precedes Infinity War. But Black Panther was the one that was released last. I remember. It was one of those. It was one of those. I don't. Oh no, no, maybe maybe Ragnarok was after Black Panther. It's been a while, chap. Yeah, the Kendrick Lamar is is great. He does such a great job. Ultron's was really good. I remember. Oh, yeah, I'll try to follow the, the statue. I like the statue one. Yeah. But there you go, guys. That was uh, Black Panther. I hope you enjoyed it. I am going to take a brief break. I'm going to refill my beverage, and I shall return, chat, for single-player shenanigans in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Until that, chat, please entertain yourselves amongst yourselves and stick around.